What is up, nerds? We are back, and I wanted to do a follow-up because we did all the basics. We've covered, like, level zero missions. We've covered Viper. We've covered updating your stuff. If you haven't seen those, I made a couple videos. They're not very long. Um, but now we're to the good stuff. Now we're going to do some actual hacking. So one thing that I wanted to bring up real quick, if this computer will work, This thing just really doesn't want to work today. There we go. So the first thing I wanted to cover is uh, proxy servers. You basically never want to hack from your home device. What you want to do is you want to go get a rented server, which I think we covered in a recent video. Now, if you want to configure those servers, you just do configland.exe, okay? And this will give you all of your um, all of your rented servers where you want to do most of your hacking from. Um, if you need to pay the bill, it'll be right here. Um, so, we are going to launch Viper from our home terminal. And I'll explain why in a minute. We launch Viper from our home terminal. And then after you get your rented server, in Viper, you pop in your SSH creds, right? So now I'm in my rented server running Viper um, that is its original state is on my home machine. Now, the most important part here is advar lib space zero. Advar space lib space zero. Basically, what this does is it gives the resources um, for processing, scanning, cracking, stuff like that. It all comes from your the, the root directory that you started Viper in. So for, so for example, what I just did, now I'm gonna be cracking with my home computer's potential, which is way more than these rented servers because I don't put a lot of, I don't wanna put a bunch of money into them. I want my computer to get beefy. So you always start from home and you SSH in the other server. And then I honestly, I always do a corrupt logs just in case, in case they get on that server, you know, then they don't have a shitload of, um, of stuff to trace me back with. So. I started one before, but my stuff freaked out. So we're just gonna do a brand new one. And we're gonna do a level, we're gonna do a level one. And we're gonna do something, we're gonna do something simple. Credentials needed is usually pretty easy. All right, so let's hack. Credentials needed, two coupons. Let's see what we got. Client wants the login credentials of the user, Maxaran. Victims public uh, private is 192.168.1.2. So that pretty much tells me they're probably going to be one step off route. So the first thing we want to do in any hack is nmap the public. Let's see what's open. Let's see what's closed. Let's see how many things are sitting there. So we have a lot of stuff. Um, and as you've also noticed, their LAN IP 1.2 is actually in here. So we can actually, we can do this pretty, we should be able to do this pretty easy. So we're going to start. We want to exploit scan, right? So we see what ports are open, what ports are closed. Now we got to decide what do we want to exploit? So we're going to do an ES, which stands for exploit scan. If you wanted to, you could do this exploit scan and type it out, but that's a lot of typing. So I just do ES. So I'll do ES, the public. Oh, no, that's private. So we're going to exploit scan the public IP. So there's three triggers that can happen here. You exploit scan, and then the next parameter is your public. Then the next parameter is your port. Those are all required. Now, if you want to, if you know the, the IP of the, the computer that you need based off the end map, you could also specify a LAN IP, right? So we have ES, public IP, the port. And since we know we need 1.2, we're gonna scan on port 80 and the uh, LAN IP address we need is 192.168.1.2, right? All pretty simple. So now we're going to scan it. Now this is going super fast because it's using the processing power from my home machine, not from my rented server. That's why that's fast. So now I can already see this right here. Um, one thing I want to encourage you to do is Viper's really easy and it does a lot of stuff for you, but it won't tell you if you're close. Right, like if an exploit could happen, but you like don't have enough ports or something, it won't tell you that. So I highly encourage you to go back through after an exploit scan and see what some of these attacks were, right? So this attack failed um, because 
it it requires a version greater than 1.13 but the target version is 105 so another if we had no other ways in we could figure out a way to actually upload their library and then exploit it using the uploaded library but i just wanted i just want to say that before we move on after you exploit scan you type targets and when you type targets this will list all of the targets that exploit scan was a was able to exploit right so well, then we use the use command oh i and i i want to make sure you know type help type help in viper it'll tell you literally everything you need about this program help I'm root at Viper at my rented server, but now I am not root anymore. See how the colors turn to gray? It's because I'm an individual user. And then you can see the IP that you're connected to and then what type of computer object you are. It goes shell, computer, file. That's the order. If you get shell, you're in a better place than computer. And most of the time, if you're in computer, you're in a better place than file. Obviously, there are a lot of exceptions to that. If you're a guest computer, root file might actually be better but you, that's kind of what you're shooting for you want a shell so now we are in his computer right now keep in mind because we have not opened up a shell we have not written any logs yet so there is no way for them to track us currently so this is going to be an easy one so we're going to do cat which means concatenate which means basically output the contents of a thing and we know that the password file is located at etc slash p a s s w d there it is we're basically done that was it so let's do a let's elevate here because i want to crack with my comp computer because it has the most stuff so we're going to do viper and then we can type crack and then we take this hash and we paste it in Okay, that's it. We're done. Uh, Max Iran and password G let me. Customer satisfied, two coupons. All right, let's go. I wonder if I can corrupt logs from here. Okay, well, we didn't have to do that because we were a computer object. We didn't actually shell in anything, but. All right, that one was super easy. So let's hit back a couple times. Let's hit back a couple times. Now, uh... Oh, I hit back too many times. Let's do one more. That was really easy. I was hoping maybe we'd do like a reverse shell or something, but I guess this is a good place to start. Okay. Hello, it's me from the future. My shit crashed. Um, I was gonna do another one, but things messed up and it was an R shell one anyway, so next video we're gonna cover our shell we're gonna we're, we're gonna do the whole thing from beginning to end how to add uh clients to users computers msf console port forwarding funny games we're gonna do that whole thing so obviously if you like what you see like the video comment subscribe all of that shit. um but we'll be back with some more later i uh, hope you guys learned something talk to you next time